From the world of gadget news this week, we were treated to a whole host of new mobile phones, tablets, and even game consoles. If you're in the market for a new mobile this week, we have been treated to loads of new handsets from the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. Nokia were there in full force showing their brand new Lumia 720, which slots into the company's product line just below the 820 and removes the LTE connectivity seen in that particular model. Everything else is pretty impressive, particularly the 6.7 megapixel camera with an f1.9 Carl Zeiss lens, removable covers which will appeal to fashion conscious types, and you can even obtain a cover which supports wireless charging. They also showcase the 520 which is all about winning the low cost smartphone sector, which has already impressed with the Lumia 620. The 520 is a similar proposition and has a 4 inch screen, a 5 megapixel camera, a dual core processor, 8 gigabyte of storage and comes in a range of appealing colours. While it's not likely to trouble the quad core monsters at the other end of the spectrum, for an estimated price of £120 it should attract buyers on a budget. LG showcased the Optimus G Pro which has a gigantic 5.5 inch 1080p screen which might cause a bit of hand strain but will be amazing for on the go movie viewing and gaming. Under the bonnet, it features brand new Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 technology, which contains a quad-core chip running a cool 1.7 GHz processor, which is pretty damn fast in mobile terms. A 13 megapixel snapper and 32 gigabytes of storage round things off, making this a fearsome piece of consumer electronics. 2013 should be another bumper year for LG. The ZTE Open was there, which is the first mobile phone to come with Mozilla's Firefox Mobile OS installed, making it a noteworthy challenger, aimed at developing markets which mean it could end up as a budget option. Asus unveiled their latest pad phone which turned out to be a bit of a head turner. For starters it's using the Snapdragon 600 chipset which means that quad core power is in play. Secondly both the phone and the tablet are rocking pin sharp HD screens which means zero compromise regardless of which configuration you're using. With a retail price of around £800 it's not a cheap purchase but it would be hard to find anywhere else you can get a cutting edge phone and a tablet combined for that kind of money. And Samsung in a rather cheeky move were caught handing out invitations to what seems to be the announcement for the Galaxy S4, a tactic no doubt designed to steal some of the thunder away from rivals like Sony, Nokia and LG. And the magical date to enter into your calendars is the 14th of March. And they also showcased the Galaxy Note 8 which is looking to gun for the Nexus 7 and iPad minis market and slots neatly in between the Fablet Note 2 and the full-scale Note 10.1 in the company's tech portfolio. It's just 8mm thick and weighs only 338 grams, making an ideal travelling companion. There's a quad-core processor inside to keep things nippy, and the inclusion of a SIM card slot means that the device is truly mobile. You can even make calls on it, although holding something that size next to your in public won't do your street cred any favours. And finally, it wasn't all just about mobiles this week, as Nintendo revealed that the Wii Mini will be hitting UK store shelves on the 22nd of March. The console is a redesigned and cheaper version of the original Wii. The system features a top-loading disc tray and comes with a fetching black or red colour scheme. But although it's dubbed the Wii Mini, in reality it's not actually that much smaller than its forerunner and sadly has no online functionality, but it's still a great way to experience some of Nintendo's fantastic Wii games at a great price. <laughs>